A second victory. Spanos on the floor. Trouble Boyer. Clint Boyer. Caution flag is out. Things change again. Wow. You see right here. Boyer. Looks like he did get a tap. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was close, but they were pitting. This spin right here is one of the most infamous moments in NASCAR history. It's a representation of both desperation and the direction that NASCAR's chase and playoffs was heading in. And it was an ugly moment for the sport as a whole. Now NASCAR penalized MWR hard for this incident right here. And I'm not going to say that they're not entirely wrong doing it. But I think that there's an argument to be said that MWR didn't exactly act as egregiously as NASCAR and many NASCAR fans think and assert that they did when it comes to cheating, but instead was doing a scummy thing that looks bad but skirts on the line. So let's lay out the incident right now, because after all, it's been over eight years since this has happened, so there's probably a lot of fans and a lot of you out there who didn't experience this moment. So I'll give you at least the Spark Notes version. Coming into the 26th race of the season at Richmond, the fight to get in the chase was close. Back then, it was all off of points as well as wins from 11th to 20th. The gap from 8th place Joey Logano to 14th place Ryan Newman was only 30 points, which meant that it was well within a race's worth of points at the time. So there was a real possibility that any of the seven drivers in that range could either jump into or fall out of the top 10. There was also the opportunity for drivers to win and get in with the two wildcard spots. So the race starts off and it's mostly run uneventfully. Within the last 20 laps, Joey Logano was floundering bad in the mid-20s, two laps down, while Ryan Newman would pass Carl Edwards for the win, or at least what we thought would be for the win. This meant that Jeff Gordon would be in off of points in 10th, and Ryan Newman would look to set himself up to lock up the second wild card spot with his second win of the year. The notables that would be left out would be Joey Logano and Martin Truex Jr. This is where the shenanigans start. With 13 to go, Logano and the Penske team that he's running for make a deal with David Gilliland's front row team to give the 22 car an extra spot to try and get up into the chase. With nine to go, they straight up tell him from Gilliland's pit box to let Joey Logano buy. At the same time as that's happening, Clint Boyer and co. were scheming about Ryan Newman taking the lead and seemingly ending their teammate Martin Truex Jr.'s chase chances. They then tell him to quote-unquote itch his arm, and then he subsequently spins out. This causes a late race restart where Newman loses the lead and Logano passes Gilliland. While this is happening, MWR is calling Boyer and fellow teammate Brian Vickers down pit road in order to get Logano up some more positions so he doesn't take the wild card spot instead of Truex. This also meant that Logano would get in on points, leapfrogging Jeff Gordon. And Gordon was winless at this point, so he wouldn't get the wild card. Newman also lost out as he fell out of the lead and down to the third spot. With all of it said and done, the chase seemed set and it was a very odd occurrence. That was until a word from Dale Jr. as a whistleblower. What did you see? Uh, he just uh, spun right out. It's the craziest thing I ever saw. The thing just came right around. Um, he got. We were going into the three, three, and uh, four, and and I don't know if they could put up his brakes and his gas. Uh, we got all that uh, technology, and uh, but he was hemming around on the brakes and jer jerking the car around, <laughs> and then the thing just spun out. It was crazy. I don't know what was going on, but. Uh, we was right there. I almost ran into him. So I'm just glad we were, we were able to get out of there with no trouble. Now, after this night, NASCAR started an investigation on the whole deal. Something just seemed fishy. And what they concluded was that there was clear race manipulation. Well, no duh. For the actions that MWR did, NASCAR docked each team 50 owner and driver points, as well as MWR as a whole, 300 grand. MWR Vice President Ty Norris was also suspended indefinitely by NASCAR. Because of this, Napa Auto Parts and other sponsors pulled support from MWR at season's end, and the team was shut down by the end of 2015. This also gave rise to NASCAR's 100% rule. And when looking at the 2013 chase due to penalties, Newman was now in, and NASCAR also added Jeff Gordon as a 13th man. The night of Spingate was one of the most historically significant nights in NASCAR history. But with that being said, this video is called In Defense of Spingate. 
I think the big reason that many like myself question the ruling is the lack of penalties for Joey Logano and Penske, aka no penalties whatsoever. Even though that they were, in a lot of ways, more blatant and egregious over the radio compared to most of MWR's control, they didn't get anything. Yeah, MWR spoke in code, but you can argue that codes, no matter how stupidly obvious they are to be codes, cannot 100% prove intent. Though it's pretty easy to say it's well above 90% to prove intent. But even so, even though most of this is dirty, it's technically not illegal. I mean, unless NASCAR knows the intent of a spin, they can't penalize somebody. And the only way they really can tell is if somebody admits to spinning out the way that Bubba Wallace did a few years ago or the way Dale Jr. did. You can't penalize someone just off of thinking they have intent, which is where NASCAR was completely inconsistent here. But even so, even though most of this is dirty, it's not technically illegal. I mean, when you strip it down, it was a really scumbag strategy, though. MWR and Penske used the resources at hand of their teams to get the best possible outcome for their teams and their sponsors. And you can't tell me that it's wrong due to quote unquote race manipulation when we've seen everyone from drivers to teams to manufacturers to NASCAR themselves manipulating races and points races through the years. There aren't rules against it. I mean, just look at the debris caution trend that was going on in the 2000s and 2010s. NASCAR manipulated races and championship battles every year with a less than certain threat of debris. They have arbitrarily called some races early for rain when they could have been restarted, and they've also went hours on end trying to resume races that could have been deemed official past the halfway point. There is no rule against it, and we as fans have accepted it. Manufacturers have ordered teams to work together with others of their manufacturer against their rivals at super speedways. This probably changed how they raced and how they finished. Teams and drivers did this before Spingate and after Spingate. Drivers not passing their teammates at plate tracks or letting each other lead laps for bonus points. They're manipulating the way the race goes and the way the championship goes. These are things that, again, we as fans have accepted and even NASCAR has accepted. What happened more here was MWR manipulated a race and NASCAR didn't like that they manipulated it. If you think about it with some critical thinking, there wasn't even a rule against what they were doing. They had to actually make a rule in response to this event. The 100% rule I talked about earlier. A rule that said that drivers had to race at 100% all the time. So if you ask me, there's a real argument to say that Spingate was a giant spin from NASCAR. After all, they literally changed the rules for the chase that season. The 50-point penalties got Truex out. That's understandable. That's just how it went. But then adding Jeff Gordon as a 13th driver to a 12-driver chase is amazingly stupid, and it's amazing seeing the mental gymnastics people have in order to try and basically say that it's valid. Gordon was put in due to being in position to qualify with nine laps left in the race when Boyer spun out. NASCAR, a real-life racing organization, literally put someone in their championship battle based off a woulda, coulda, shoulda, based off a hypothetical that he would have just kept that position for nine laps, that nothing would have happened. And I hear all these fans defending it, saying that Gordon got in because it was an unfair shake beforehand, and so he deserved his spot. But when in the hell does a driver getting treated unfairly in a scenario bring on the reward of getting into the chase or competing for a championship better than they would have otherwise? There were plenty of drivers with an unfair shake due to others' actions through the years that have never gotten rewarded for it. They've just been screwed the way that Gordon should have been. And just an aside, I find it hysterical that Jeff Gordon fans will hate on NASCAR's decisions with the chase when it comes to the times it's hurt him in 2004, 2007, and 2014 due to a bunch of what-ifs. But they will turn around and defend NASCAR's 2013 season literally made off a what-if. But yeah, I think that when you look at it, and when you look at NASCAR's history in the chase and the playoffs since then, it's been a real argument to say that MWR got screwed, that they were just ahead of their time. 
just in 2021 alone, teams have manipulated the playoff grid to get other team members wins or better finishes. Joey Logano held up Kyle Larson to help Brian Blaney win in Atlanta earlier this year. Ross Chastain held up Kyle Busch to help Kurt Busch win at the second Atlanta race. And Chase Elliott held up Kevin Harvick, and that ended up helping Kyle Larson win at Bristol in the playoffs. This has changed the way the 2021 playoffs season and maybe championship will shake out. And yet most have pretty much glossed over this because it's for drivers that they like. Because the ones that benefited are the fan favorites. But if you ask these same fans about Spingate, they'll call it a cheating scandal. Now, I want to hear from you. Is Spingate as egregious as the majority of people in the narrative says it is? Or is it not? Tell me why if you think so, or why not if you don't think so. Just let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video. Share this video and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content like this. And thank you to all of my channel members for all of your support. I very much appreciate it. So until next time, have a good one.